morning. Good morning to each and every one of you and welcome this morning to Peace Through the Word, uh, our daily devotional ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church in Benson, Arizona in the United States of America. And coming to you this morning from my office at Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church in Benson. So, so good to welcome you on this Maundy Thursday morning uh, as we come together uh, to hear God's word and to re excuse me, receive the peace that he has for us all because of his unconditional love, grace, and mercies for us. And so uh, we thank you again from the bottom of our hearts for your willingness to chime in and be a part of this ministry on a daily basis. It is incredibly appreciated. And so we sincerely thank you. My brothers and sisters, this is Maundy Thursday. And uh, the reason this day is so important on, in Holy Week is that this is the day that Jesus instituted his Holy Supper, Holy Communion. Holy Communion is not just a religious um, ritual. It is a very serious, meaningful uh means of grace that Jesus gives to his church to provide for the forgiveness of sins, life eternal, victory over sin, death, and the devil, and all the blessings of a restored creation so that we can have that assurance that it's no, no guesswork or no, you know, I, I, I hope I can be saved. <laughs> it's a reality. And so he gives that to us uh, so that we can have that assurance. Uh, and so we're going to look at that again very uh, uh, seriously this morning through our theologian, C.F.W. Wather. And C.F.W. Wather, as I mentioned to you before, was the second president of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate. And so he has a lot to say about this uh, Holy Supper called the Lord's Supper. And uh, it's not called the Lord's Supper just by accident either. It's because it's the Lord Jesus Christ who instituted it. It's the Lord Jesus Christ who created it. So it's the Lord Jesus Christ who says what it is and what it is not. It's not anybody else. It's not a church denomination or individuals either. So it's only Jesus who says what it is and what it is not. And that can rub against people, but uh, it doesn't matter. As we would say in the legal field, it is what it is. Okay, Jesus says what it is, okay? So I pray that's going to bless you. I pray it's going to encourage you. I pray it's going to excite you. <laughs> and I pray it's going to comfort you all at the same time, okay? So my brothers and sisters, we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father. Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And so give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, 
and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. So my brothers and sisters, this morning, we're going to look at the passage of scripture where uh, CFW Wather is going to share with us where Holy Communion, Holy Communion unites the participant to Christ's body and blood like this. And it's sad and it's a reality that there are quite a few Christian denominations that don't believe that. In spite of what Jesus specifically says, which is not good. <laughs> okay, and it's, it's tragic, it's sad, because they don't have that assurance. Okay. So, and not only do they not have that, but it, it's a testimony that they don't believe in the miraculous of God. And that's what's really tragic. Because you can't say, well, I, I don't believe this, but I'll believe this. In other words, I, I don't believe in the sacramental ministry, but I'm going to say I believe in the virgin birth of Jesus. I'm going to say, no, you don't. If you don't believe in the miraculous of sacramental ministry, you most certainly do not believe in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. And that's damning. So this is very serious. This is very serious. Okay, so let me share with you the passage of scripture that uh, Dr. Uh, C.F.W. Wather is going to unpack for us. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 10 in two verses, only 16 and 17. And this is where St. Paul is talking to the Christian church. So he's not talking to people who are ignorant of this. He's talking to Christians that ought to know this. Okay, so this is addressed to Christians. So listen to what St. Paul says in these two verses. And then CFW Wather is going to unpack this for us. St. Paul says, the cup of blessing that we bless. In other words, Holy Communion. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? So he's asking a question to these Christians. So wait a second, he goes, wait a second here. So is this cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? So he's waiting for the Christians to answer. Is it or is it not? All right. So then he goes, the bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? So then he says in verse 17, because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread, Jesus Christ. All right, so that's the foundation that is presented as CFW Wather unpacks this for this tremendous truth for us this morning. Listen to what he says. As the faith of the Christian is increased and strengthened by his participation in the Lord's Supper, so is his love. Now, I'm going to go so far as say, you know, if you don't believe that, if you just believe that it's a, just a memorial, just symbolic, then I don't think you can attest to this. That your participation in that is a strengthening uh, of your faith and love. I don't see where that can be the case. All right. So the fire of faith cannot exist without lighting and burning. These come from love with its hidden glow on the inside and the shining of good works on the outside. 
As soon as a person becomes joyfully certain of his salvation, he cannot do otherwise. The ice of his heart melts away, removing anger and irreconcilability and replacing them with deeds that follow the example of Christ himself, seeking to embrace all in love. The Lord's Supper increases the Christian's love precisely because Christ's body and blood are present and received in it. That's why I said, if you don't believe that, I don't see how you can have those qualities. Okay? It's pretty straightforward. So, as the Apostle Paul explains in our text, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? And the bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of one bread. St. Paul is asking us, as we eat of the blessed bread and drink from the blessed cup, to remember that we are partaking of the body and blood of Christ. So he's reminding us that's what we're doing. We're, our senses might say it's bread and wine, but Jesus' word says, no, it's my bread, it's my body and blood. So it's the word that makes something what it is, the word of Jesus. And he says it's his body and blood, in, with, and under bread and wine. So they are common to all of us. And by receiving them, we enter a body and blood fellowship, most certainly. We certainly do. You don't do that in a memorial service or something that's symbolic. <laughs> it doesn't happen, right? So as bread comes from many pieces of grain, so in the Holy Supper we become one body, one people, although we are many. Because we partake of the one bread, the same body and blood of Christ, the supper is a meal of the most intimate communion. And thus, it is a meal that demands and encourages an intimate love. Certainly does. We gather as equal children as at the family table of our common heavenly father. We may be greatly different from other communicants in everyday life, but here at the Holy Supper, all of our differences disappear. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? They all just go away. We all share the same earthly and heavenly bread and drink the subject and the king, the slave and the master, the beggar and the rich person, the young and the old, the woman and the man, the simplest and the most highly educated. <laughs> Here, all communicants stand as sinners and beggars who are poor, hungry, and thirsty for grace. This is where you get your grace. All right? One of us may stand at the table in a coarse smock while another comes in velvet and silk adorned with gold and pearls. But when we depart, we are both clothed with Christ's blood and righteousness. All of us have received the same Jesus and the same righteousness from him. When we know in departing from the table of the Lord that our fellow communicants have the same Jesus in their hearts, we do as we do. This fosters the most intimate and fervent brotherly love. By eating the same body and drinking the same blood of Christ, we become one body and receive a common soul, Jesus. Isn't that great? <laughs> that is so great. So we must therefore love our fellow communicants as our second self. 
And you see, all that is because we're receiving the real presence of the body and blood of Jesus Christ in, with, and under bread and wine. And it's all because of Jesus' words that he says, take, eat. This is my body given for you. And then he says, take, drink. This is my blood shed for you. Why? For the forgiveness of sins. He doesn't say it represents, it's symbolic or any of that nonsense. He says it is. And whether that uh, flies against your human logic or not, who cares? It's what Jesus says that, that counts, not what you think or want to believe. Okay? Because he's the one who instituted the supper. You didn't. Your church denomination didn't. Jesus did. And he's the only one who did that. So Jesus is the only one who says what it is and what it isn't. Nobody else. Okay? Serious business. So I pray it's going to bless you in ways that go beyond your sinful human logic and comprehension. Praise the Lord. All right. So, o Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days for which we're living, he's spoken to us by his son, Jesus Christ. Big difference. So blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He's come to his people. He's redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. <laughs> this was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of true peace. So glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. So brothers and sisters, we continue to pray. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this morning together, let's pray the wonderful, beautiful prayer that our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. And so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you. Thank you again so very much for joining us uh, this morning at Peace Through the Word. I, I really appreciate it. It's appreciated by everyone here at Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church in Benson. And uh, I pray that you've uh, received real peace, real strength, real encouragement, real comfort this morning in really realizing what Holy Communion is all about. 
And if you're still a little bit uh, not sure, drop us a line. Uh, you know, you can put a comment on there and, and I'll try to uh, make it even more uh, clear if, if it's not clear enough <laughs> for you. Because I want you to have that, that assurance, okay? That, it, it's critical, it's important, okay? I would also like to ha in, invite you to join us this evening uh, live uh, here if you're in the local area at Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church for a Monday evening uh, service. Uh, and we're going to be looking at with Jesus and with one another as we uh, take this Holy Supper and of Jesus' body and blood in with and under bread and wine for the forgiveness of our sins. And if you're not able to join us in person, you can join us live uh, virtually uh, at Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church uh, Facebook page, and uh, you, can, you can do that as well. And that's at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So I invite you to join us if you're able. My brothers and sisters, it's a beautiful day here in southern Arizona. Beautiful skies, beautiful weather. <laughs> and, and so I just want to convey all of God's blessings to you in abundance. Uh, I've retracted the landing gear and the flaps. And so it's a beautiful day to fly. A beautiful day to walk with your Lord and to receive his body and blood later today. And so until we meet again, tremendous blue skies, tremendous blessings. Amen. Amen.